happy Juneteenth, at least on the day this podcast was recorded. This is going off podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Uh, and happy Pride as well. That That's still happening, right? Uh, yep, for uh, at least that's another almost. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost forgot. It's been a week. It's been a month. Very specifically, it's been a day. Let me tell you about my day <laughs> and why I'm sitting here with an ice pack uh, strapped to my side. What's going on? Your boy done goofed. I'm in a car. I'm in the driver's seat. I was trying to reach for something in the second row floorboard. A lot of newer cars have that little center component. It's like an armrest, but you can open it up and you can store things in there. It's very handy. So I'm leaning against that and I'm trying to reach in the floorboard and I feel something shift. Oh. And I think I bruised a rib. I don't know what a bruised f- rib feels like. Oh, yeah. But it just felt like something kind of kind of jostled. Oh. In there. Ooh. I thought you were going to say like you got cut by something. I thought you were going to say someone. <laughs> yeah, so was just chilling underneath. <laughs> I gotta check the mirrors. You never know who's gonna be back there. But yeah, man, I'm in a little bit of pain. But there's too much stuff on my heart right now, man. <laughs> I'd gladly risk it all right now, man, because it's a life or death situation. Y'all don't really understand how I feel right now, man. This is the art. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Protest <of me. laughs> Anyway, <laughs> we're talking about pride, right? And um, who better to capitalize on pride than your girl? T Swift, T Sway, mm. uh, Tay Tay, T Swizzle. I had a dream last night. I had hot top nights. I had diamonds in my mouth and diamonds on my mic. If I'm not mistaken, mm. I think. Your boys might be at odds right now. Ooh. I I, I I didn't I didn't think it was gonna happen. See, I saw your tweet and I saw the responses to the tweet. Um, <laughs> because I didn't know how to read it either. I remember you said something something to the effect of something along the lines of uh the the new Taylor Swift music video or single might be hater proof. What can you say to this song that will not be met with you need to calm down. Like, you can't beat that. You can't beat the, you mad, you mad. Like, yeah, no, that's that's a bit of a trump card. You know what I mean? I gotta break the news to you. Mm. My TL has been nothing but salt. The people, the people aren't feeling it. We see through the rainbow-colored uh, disguise Taylor is donning. I had already not liked the first single, the, the the Taylor Swift, the me joint. Like, I even rewatched it. Maybe this was actually all right, and I just didn't give it a chance the first time. And just, like, as soon as it started, when she, you know, changes her emotion just to happy and just does the awkward thing, I was just like, yeah, and yet, like, the music barely even started. And it was like a minute in the video, the song barely started, and I was like, ah, I can't do it, it's too much cheese, too much cheese at once. I love campy shit right like i'm all for that biz but this was just it's saccharine now but when i got to this video i i i had that feeling i was like oh, all right well you know let's let's see what happens and i hit play and i did not like the first couple of lyrics where it was just like uh, taking shots at me like shots of patron or something like that and oh, i was like oh god mm, that one kind of like shook me the wrong way but then, like, when it got to the chorus, I was kind of feeling it. I was just like, you know what? I took a spoonful of sugar, and it helped that medicine go down. I enjoyed the corniness of it. I enjoyed, like, this was the perfect level of cheese. This was the, the just the right amount, I felt. Like, the, the right amount of camp, or, or the right of silliness and over-the-topness. Like, when your boy, uh, uh, was the Indian uh, dude, when he hit the tea sip, when he just, like, <laughs> turned it upside down and just had to do it. I was like, oh, that, that was when I was sold. It was just, that was just an epic, a cool ass looking moment. I was like, I, I can't be mad at this. I can't be mad at this. You know what I mean? Well, see, here's the thing. I'm not mad either. The word is frustrated. And to start things off, I'm going to quote a uh, a man who is quite polarizing these days. I'll leave it at that. All uh, Carlos Maza of uh, Vox says, gay culture is having to smile and say thanks 
when a pop star spends all Pride Month singing about how cool gay people are. Which is to say, people expect that when someone, when, when, when a straight ally quote-unquote goes out of their way to to throw you a bone, so to speak, that you need to be super fucking grateful that they took the time to do it. Because if you don't, then it seems like you're ungrateful and like you should be happy that they're taking the time to do it when it's like, well, people should be saying that all the time. And Taylor Swift, I will give her this, uh, she has been coming to the table more recently and more frequently than others, uh, giving to a uh, to a local uh, charity in uh, in Tennessee, I want to say, and she's also spoken out against um, anti LGBTQ legislation. But another quote I saw, which uh, which goes into a little bit more depth. This is a this is a couple tweets, so bear with me. Taylor Swift, you were so close. The enemy isn't poor rural whites in the trailer park that you took over. The enemy is the people in power. The men in suits in the conference rooms and the men in robes behind the pulpit preaching and legislating hate. Did you know that West Virginia has the highest concentration of transgender teens? What kind of message were you sending with those protesters? Toothlessness and poor spelling. Stereotypes of hillbillies. Really? But I didn't see a representation of Mike Pence or Stephen Miller or Donald Trump because you took the easy route and illustrated poor people as the enemy. I am so disappointed in the people who took part in the overt classism of this video. Why? Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you only painting the poor people as being homophobic? Because this is like, I mean, those aren't the people that put things in power. And also, I mean, we know, you know, we know have concrete evidence for at least the latest election. That wasn't it. Um, It was like lots of middle to upper class people that voted for Trump. That does kind of remind me of another real quick thing I want to point out. But the motherfucking shit going on in Sudan. A few celebrities, I saw Cardi B and others, uh, change their display icons to just this solid blue color uh, to raise awareness for the uh, for the massacres going on in Sudan right now. And a lot of people are criticizing this as, quote-unquote, like, selectivism. Like, oh, you know, there's so much more you could do. You're wasting your time getting mad at people on Twitter for changing their display icon when people on Twitter can only do so much. The people with the money, the people with the power, they're the ones you gotta be a little bit more critical of because they have that much more of an effect. It's like when we were talking about what's going on on YouTube, bringing it back to Carlos Maza. There's a lot of things going on and people are looking at just everyday people. Every YouTuber, big and small, has a say in what can happen on the website when really, you gotta hold, you know, the big fuck names because they're unfortunately the only ones that the website actually pays attention to. It's the easy thing to do because whenever anyone thinks about homophobia or racism, and I'm not saying this isn't accurate, I'm not saying this isn't without merit and without precedent, but a lot of people imagine the South. Is Taylor Swift gonna fucking take shots at fucking Chick-fil-A in her music video? No, because there's money to be lost there. I feel like we can enjoy this video while at the same time, at the end of the day, go, you know, there are bigger issues out there, and let's let's use something like this that brought this up as a jumping off point to discuss those issues. What messages were being sent uh, uh, that represented the zeitgeist of the time? I think it's really cool. Even someone this big who did not have to do something like this is making it impossible for someone to enjoy their pop music without having that acceptance of the LGBT community. That's how I feel. I absolutely agree. And otherwise, 2018, 2019, even 2017, the music and top 40 pop radio has been fucking boring. Lifeless. It is so fucking dull. And, and there's so much going on in this world right now. There's absolutely so much. But again, everyone is so concerned about that bottom line, which brings mm-hmm. it back to Taylor. And I'm not saying that I don't appreciate what she's doing, because I do. Okay. I do. I'm not looking this gift horse you in got, the mouth. You got your boy Todrick all in there who just dropped a motherfucking banger. <laughs> you know. I can have appreciation as well <laughs> as critiques. And these of are my course, critiques. Of course, of course. You mentioned me earlier. This song with <laughs> the, the song with ya boy. Oh yeah, my boy. <laughs> he, he <and> my boy. <laughs> Brandon Murray. All right, he's my boy. I'll claim him. 
why was he on that track? Why did you not have queer musician as a, as a fucking feature on this one? We could parse that all day, right? Like, we go, like, well, how come you didn't have a gay director? How come you didn't have a, a, a gay this, gay that? It's just like, I mean, I hate to be like, wasn't there enough? But it's just like, I mean, there were a lot, a lot more fuckers than I would have known. This is what it seemed like to me. Taylor's agent also worked for a whole bunch of other queer people and thought, these are the easiest people I can get in the video. We need Ellen. We need the queer eye guys. And it's like, I was like, "Mm mm-hmm, okay, a drag race? Okay, yeah, straight people love drag race too. I got a good comparison. Do you think this is like the girls like you of uh, the LGBT? (laughs) I (laughs) used to say that because Ellen was in both. Now, of course, there is the issue of her saying, like, oh, you know, uh, uh, why are you mad at me? And, you know, what people are saying, the, uh, well, uh, poo-poo on Taylor for equivocating her personal struggles with the struggles of the LGBT yeah. community in yeah. the song. But, uh, uh, for that, I'm just like, I, I don't know. She's that's the legit- biggest. Wait, no, wait, wait, that's, that's so, wait, 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 can I just finish? Like, she's the biggest pop star in the world. I don't know. You think she's not going to make it about herself a little bit? I mean, it's, like, I, it doesn't make it okay. <laughs> not every video, I'm saying, not every video can be the same love. Let's be super serial about the LGBT community uh, issues, guys. I think it's cool to have something that's like, yo, this is a fun song, and I'm trying to have fun with this because I don't think all gay people's lives is just a slog. You know what I mean? Well, and I feel like to have to look at it like, oh, it has to be the perfect thing. It cannot be about her in any capacity. In order for her to be a, a, a gay positive person, she must not have it be about her. Oh, uh, she cannot mention this. She cannot. No, it's like, come yeah, on, guys. She, she, no, she, she absolutely shouldn't make it about her. That is a legitimate complaint. But why does it have to be this checklist in order for something to to pass the wokeness test? You know what I mean? Like she makes it sound like, and it, all it is is it is a fucking straight lens that she's looking at the problems that that LGBTQ people face at a pride. Where yeah, like she makes it sound like there's five people standing standing there with signs. Oh, and man, it's fucking, it looks really cheesy because they, because they're not very good at, m- at making the signs, but it's okay. You could just turn the other cheek and it's like, like I said, they, yes, they definitely oversimplify. <laughs> and, and again to that, you didn't fucking have to do it. Like if the whole point of the song was to be a pro LGBTQ, this is so supportive. You didn't have to make it about protesters a pride at all. You did that. For the fucking, to try to seem like, well, I'm better than that. You didn't have to do that. Just having, just having the queer people in the video proves you, that you're not like that. If, if you're gonna try to have it be this, it's so fucking happy we're all having tea, then have it be that. But if you're gonna try to do both, then, then it gets fucking muddled and the message gets muddled. In the song itself, it's what I'm saying. You didn't need that. F- Honestly, though, because if it wasn't for that verse, to me, it just feels like Shake It Off 2. It, that's all it fucking is, because if it wasn't for that really cheesy as fucking hell verse, uh, you don't have to be mad, be glad, and if you didn't look at the lyrics, you wouldn't even know it was spelt like the organization, because it's not even fucking, you, your mind wouldn't even go there. Why? Do, why? Why even write the whole thing? about people protesting. She spends more time talking about the people protesting than actual queer people in the song. The way I look at the song is, at the end of the year, when you make, you know, the 100 songs, uh, uh, best songs of the year, right? And there may not be any other queer representation on that list, right? This but certainly gonna, won't be in w- there. W- w- uh, but what I mean is, <laughs> I mean, I mean, is it is this not on the charts still? It's not at all? I, it's not going to be in the fucking, like, year-end top ten or anything like Dude, that. Dude, uh, 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 don't the mark fuck those out words, here. Mute. No way. Don't mark those words, Muse. Dude, fucking me. <laughs> don't, don't mark those words. The fucking song with Brandon Yuri, who currently has, no, he currently has two fucking songs on the radio in heavy rotation. And Taylor Swift couldn't even fucking stay in the top ten for, like, two weeks with Brandon Yuri on a song. It's slipping. People are fucking over her, dude. The only reason she's getting any press is because she's trying to do this fucking super woke shit. Okay, but I just, I don't know. I just don't feel like, 
I, I don't like the idea of going like, how dare you even try? Let's pick apart any, every way that you were imperfect I'm not, and fuck I'm you not for even trying. Like, because that's what it ends up kind of feeling like. Because it's just like, well, fuck it. Then no one try then. <laughs> you know? It's like, like I can understand we can go like, all right, maybe you could have done that a little better. But boom, that's kind of dope that you put that there's this song out there where like, because like I said, from the angle of the actual like LGBT community, I could see how it's just like, and that maybe that's not good enough. But from the angle of like, but who the fuck else is gonna see this? So I feel like it has a purpose in that it creates this atmosphere in which there are pop, there is the existence of a pop song which says, yeah, yeah, maybe it can. And like I said, I feel like there's an element of norminess to it, right? That I feel is being utilized for a purpose. The idea that this sounds like a normal pop song with the sort of like, oh man, we chill on these haters. Oh man, get off me. Like, you fucking haters. And then the second verse, hey, matter of fact, get off of his mess too. You know, I, I like that sort of deal. I, I don't think everything needs to be looked at in the lens of what is this doing to advance the gay golf? Maybe it's just like, yo, it's cool that he just did this story and then boom, there's a little thing over there. All right, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like Rocky Horror Picture Show was not a really good representation for anybody. As soon as you take a look and analyze the characters in that film, it fucking falls apart as far as any good representation. But what the fuck else did uh, queer people have at the time, right? And so I feel like this can be looked at in a similar no, way. It's just like, no. yeah, sure, maybe it falls apart on, on some scrutiny, but it's just like, it's cool. It's cool that it's here. Rocky Horror is a fun movie that, that queer people enjoy. This is a bad song that that queer people don't enjoy. I feel like everyone's on alert to, like, call someone out when it's no, just no, like, no. not everything has to be a big political statement. Sometimes they're just doing something a little it cool. It doesn't. It could just be a fucking bop that queer people appreciate. You have some fucking queer people in the video, and that's it. it she fucking made it a big fuck woke thing when she didn't have to. And because she did it poorly... That's what people are criticizing, mm. and I'm, I'm I don't want to I don't mean to put you on the spot, but the vibe I'm getting kind of goes back to what I said at the top that what I'm hearing is you should just fucking settle for this because this might be all you get. No, I literally I said you can look at it this way, but I personally feel that it was like, but I think you can possibly look at it in the sense of like. But it is cool to have this song and in the wave of other hundreds of boring ass fucking songs out there. Oh, yeah. Yo, here's this song where it's like, this is a pop song just like the other ones. But yo, it's throwing a shout out to the LGBT community. And you can't fucking, and you can't fucking overlook that because like in every other song where everything could be just flavorless and bland, this is doing that. And in a way that I feel big ups them and, to me, I feel didn't sidestep them. I felt like it was just like, there's a first verse that's about this, and there's a second verse that's about this. That that can happen. Songs can be about multiple things sure. that have unifying themes of, hey, don't fuck with us, you need to fucking chill out. But when you've got actually super talented queer musicians out there making considerably better music, not getting the limelight that a Taylor Swift is getting, your fucking Janelle Monae's... Uh, just to fucking name one, your fucking Troy Savans, your Kim Petras, other artists that people put on a bigger pedestal as allies, fucking Cupcake, Lizzo, Carly Rae Jepsen, these people who have all had music come out this year and last year. I agree. Not getting the radio play. They're getting the fucking, they're, they're getting the articles on like Billboard and Rolling Stone, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean shit. You're fucking Brock Hamptons, just to name a fucking few. So when, we, so when we see a fucking straight ally getting all this fucking shit for, for just saying, ah, you know, throwing shade doesn't make you less gay. It's like, yeah, okay. The song fucking blows. Muse, I agree with you. I agree with you. It sucks that these other uh, more famous artists that are queer and of this community that could be representing this, could be representing the message of queerness and the experience of queerness in a better way. It sucks that this system does not allow them sure. to do that. But that system is not Taylor Swift. And so I think as an individual artist, it's cool for them to go like, for someone to notice this system that is doing that and go like, boom, let me do some of it. Let me do what I can. Like, I'm not like, why do we have to make it so that like, I feel like at the same, it, it, this is kind of like the same thing as going like, oh, they were great uh, black artists back in Elvis's day. So fuck Elvis for being as popular as he was. Yeah, fuck the system that allowed Elvis to be as popular as he was. But are we really saying, like, absolutely no talent, absolutely never, 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 whatsoever, couldn't dance, couldn't sing nothing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, So are queer people allowed to criticize this at all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I said, because like, I, because... Because I feel like at every point 
I've tried to criticize this. You fucking, you've come back at this. I need to defend Taylor Swift, the millionaire, against well, the, hold on. Against I'm not the saying, criticism from queer people. I'm not, I'm not saying I need to defend it just to defend it. I'm bringing you a point, and, I mean, do I you, mean, what do you think of that point? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> dispelling that. Like, okay. you, you, you're bringing this point to the table as if it's something we never considered. But of course what I mean it's something is- we consider. Of course, I said at the top that I appreciate what she is doing, but she did it shitty. And she doesn't deserve this much accolades for doing some for doing what I consider to be cl- closer to bare minimum. I, I asked you, like, for an example, what is the thi- one of the things that she did shittily? And I believe that you had said she could have had more queer people represented in the song. A few things I suggested. First of okay. all, I said I said you could have featured a uh, a queer musician, but that's not something she did wrong. The the lyrics are yeah, bad. See, see first what I'm of saying? All. Like, it's like, okay, like, but You're why to call even me out present? Of my criticisms now. But why present the idea that oh well, she could have done this if that's not even a thing that makes the song good or bad? The song is bad either with with or without features. It's bad. Okay, okay, so, alright, we're starting from the point that you don't enjoy any of the lyrics. Like, any the, of the song, the, you don't, you don't the think The lyrics are corny as hell, no. That, that, that is, if, if we're, if we have to start from a fucking place of, if we're gonna start at a place of, like, no bias either way, it's a bad song. It's a really annoying song, and the lyrics are bad. I, I disagree. I thought it was a good song. Okay. I thought it was That's, fun. And, yeah. and we can agree and we could disagree on that. I feel like the song was enjoyable enough to me that I can give it its props in the sense that I enjoyed what it was doing as well as the music video shouting all of these talented gay artists. But at the same time, I yes, I do realize that there are better people, but I feel like that imbalance is not something to be laid out on her or the quality of the song. It's something to be laid on a system that, that does not allow queer artists to be seen on the same level. She fucking deserves some of the criticism for the song being bad. The but, system I mean, isn't at fault for the song being bad. And, and, you, and, and I'm like not I said, saying it has to be perfect. <laughs> I never said it had to be perfect. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just bringing you my criticisms and, and my, my my issues with it. All right, all right. We're not going to agree that this is a a good song. See, yeah, yeah, and I think <laughs> the video was cute. I enjoyed it. I liked it when I watched it. I ain't watching that shit again. Okay, wait. I actually have a a slightly bigger point. Would you not agree that the the philosophical goodwill that you allow an artist uh, slightly depends on whether or not you, on a fundamental level, just enjoyed their work, right? Um, I'm gonna disagree on that because okay. because I said in my tweet. That, you know, queer people should be allowed to not like a song, even if the intent is good. Case in point, Earth by Lil Dicky. I liked that Lil Dicky album we listened to, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. I I remember liking quite a few songs on that. Earth was shit. And I I liked where his heart was, and I liked the message he was putting forth. Honestly, Mm. I think he did a much better job presenting his point. Oh, no! Than Taylor Swift did in this. Because he actually fucking took the time to articulate what he fucking meant. And he didn't sugarcoat shit for the sake of radio play, which I don't think Taylor's gonna see a whole hell of a lot of anyway. Okay, so uh, actually, now we could argue this point. Her being a pop star, her job is to deliver the hits, right? Right, yes. Could you not say that her being like, all right, we know at the end of the day, I gotta bring these hits. I gotta try to top this chart. Mm -hmm. So I gotta do that. Yeah. But let me try to throw something in here too where it, that'll be a shout out to these people because it's like I I I can't oh, yeah. just make the big hit song. I can't just do and and now and you don't have to enjoy it just because they did that. I, I get what right. you're saying. Oh, oh, here's another good example. Like black exploitation in like the 70s. Yes. They can be heavily criticized for how poorly they represented black people's issues in this and the third. But you know, uh, in this documentary that I was watching about it, you know, they were kind of talking about how it's like, but it was a kind of interesting stepping stone because it's just like, but now we're in the door and now we're here and now you can't really, you can't really act like we're not anymore. You can't put us in the background of the movies anymore because now it's proof. People want to see a movie starring a black guy. You know, I'll look at it like this. It's like, I think this is kind of dope because it's just like, okay, the pop charts want to hear songs about someone saying that they're gay. Do the pop charts want that? Again, and it all depends on whether or not people like the song. Because, yo, Shake It Off was a whack song, but if it was on the air, it's on the fucking air. I like Shake It Off way better than this one. 
Man, yeah. you, no love for this one. I, I'm not, <laughs> I never want to hear the song again. I'm not. I'm not saying that to be funny. Like, <laughs> no, I, no, I'm never saying, gonna yeah. seek this you video just, or song out like, ever again. I never. I never care to hear it again. Point blank. Period. Oh no. damn. Oh my no, bad. I. I, I can completely shit. do without this shit. No, oh shit. <laughs> here's my question to you. Okay. 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 Because you do bring up a very good point with uh, with the black exploitation films and it being a fucking gateway. Now, do right. you think that this song by Taylor Swift, a straight musician, with no queer people on the song, but happens mm. to mention queer people in the song. And has get queer people in the video. In, in, in the a video, very sure. popular uh-huh. video. On YouTube, yes. Do you think this is going to open a door for queer musicians to be played on the radio? Um, I mean, to ask for a definitive thing. I don't think it's going to help at all. Really? No. No. If she would have actually featured someone in the song, maybe. But this as it is, it only benefits her. I'll put it to you like this. When there was fucking... Someone put whistling in a song once, and then there was like a two-year period there where really like all was. the fucking pop songs exactly. had whistles in them. Because that's what it, is what it was in it, though. The whistling but, but, was in the song. But what I mean is it's like, here's a song that's specifically bringing up some uh, 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 a queer identity, a queer character. Okay, you think other okay. people aren't going to be like, oh shit, wait, she was able to make a hit song, and she could bring up a queer character, and, and, and she was able to make a hit? Oh, we're, okay, alright, fuck it, I'll do it too. You know what I mean? It's all monkey see monkey doing this fucking industry. Yeah, but Macklemore also did the same thing with Same Love, like what, <laughs> six years ago? And it took six years for another fucking radio hit to talk about queer people? And no one did it since Macklemore. Not but until Taylor Swift. You, but the thing I say to you is, is that Taylor Swift's fault? No, I'm not saying it is. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's not going to be the stepping stone. Okay, all right. It's it's not, yeah, gonna, right. It's not going to further the cause. But it hardly could at be. all. It could be. It could. Yeah, sure. It, it could be anything. Yo, imagine, imagine fucking Todrick Call comes out with the remix next week. Imagine fucking okay. the other. It, you know, like it ain't going to get radio play though. But I feel like it's the same thing when people were coming at uh, Same Love and being like, oh, you know, it wasn't good enough because of it. It's like, I mean, okay, but in hip-hop, there were no songs like this at all. And it's dope that he's making it so that hip-hop can't ignore it now. You know what I'm saying? It's dope that she's making it that, like, yeah. can, uh, now, 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 of course, we can argue about the quality of the song in and of itself. But as a thing that exists in the zeitgeist, it is just like, yo, hey, I just said... This guy's in a dress. What what the fuck's going on now? Are you going to ban the song? Is it going to be an issue? Is something going to fucking happen? Oh, no, it's not? Oh, oh, shit. Okay, then this must be normal and it shouldn't be a problem anymore. I can absolutely see that whole verse being a reason it doesn't get radio play. Especially in, like, Alabama and southern states. They will refuse to play the song. They won't play it. So now we can start having that argument, can't we? Yeah, we, we could have had that long before Taylor Swift came along. Instead of looking at in the sense of how is Taylor Swift being exploitative of gay people? I think we should look at it as how can queer people exploit Taylor Swift's opening of this lane? That's how I think of it. I, I don't really think there's that strong of an argument. I mean, ma- 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 maybe can we, now, now I-, I wanted to get on another point though. Okay. Uh, the end of the video. <laughs> That felt a little. That I, I, yeah, because I was like, <laughs> that made the video and all the fucking hit pieces and news articles. They weren't about the queer people anymore. It was all about Katy Perry and Taylor Swift bury the hatchet on this phony as fuck beef that no one's talked about in years. Yeah, I went back and I listened to. I watched my video for Swish Swish. And I point, and I'd mentioned in there something I completely forgot that people were actually speculating that that song was a response track, a dis, a diss track response to Taylor Swift's Bad Blood, which at that point was already like a year and a half old. Wh- what the fuck was this beef? It's not a highly publicized beef. Only fucking stands of Taylor and Katie even cared about this in the first place. And so to see them hug in goofy costumes. That what does that do for anybody? When I was watching the video, I just thought of it as just like for anyone who doesn't know what this is, this just looks like she's like finally confessing her love for Katy Perry. And people have already fucking said, "Is Taylor gonna come out in this?" 
Like, like, is she going to try to attempt to do the fucking Nicki Minaj? I'm by actually, no, I'm not. I, I do feel like it's pandering. I do feel like what she did here really wasn't important or all that impactful. Donations to GLAAD went up substantially, but I couldn't even tell you what the fuck that organization does because as far as I'm concerned, they're just a glorified lobbyist firm like the Human Rights Campaign. Meanwhile, last year you had Billie Eilish come out with a song and the proceeds of the song went to the fucking Trevor Project. I don't think the proceeds of this song or video are going to a charity. She gave $113,000, which is a drop in the fucking bucket for her, to a queer charity, like, earlier in the year. But if you wanted to fucking make a difference with the song, you would have had proceeds of the maybe iTunes sale or Apple Music sales go to a fucking charity. But I don't think they are. Does any song that is by someone who is not of a certain group making something for a certain group, does it have to automatically be... This is 100% for these people, and if I get anything, I'm the worst person ever. No, but she doesn't deserve the fucking pat on the back she's getting for this. She doesn't deserve to get shit on so hard, but she also doesn't deserve the praise nearly as much either. Boom. All right. Let, how about, look at it, uh, yeah, let's look at it like that. It's like, okay. this isn't something where you you are the greatest person of all time, but it's like, it's cool that this is out there. It's oh, yeah. cool that this is in a pop landscape. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's not the savior that we need. Because it shouldn't be. It's a pop song. It should have never been planned to be. But it's there, isn't it? Oh, uh, you know? That didn't need to be there, but it's there. With all that, I think we've hit just about every talking point on yeah. that. <laughs> and, and might have had one of the heat, one of the most heated discussions we've had on the show Woo! there. 201, starting it with a bang. <laughs> Fucking new season, new us, new look, same great taste. That's what I'm going to say. Now, we have got ourselves... God, how much time are we going to spend on these? We've already went now. <laughs> uh, the first request is from my side of the pond, and it is Newer Mind, requested by Lorne Cates. It is a tribute album put out by Spin Magazine, where a whole bunch of artists uh, do covers of the tracks from Nirvana's album Nevermind. With the album Some considered to be one of the, if not the, quintessential 90s album. It's super important. It changed the fucking musical landscape. Uh, it gave the 90s a individual identity separate from the 80s. It, the 90s is fucking here. So how does it sound in 2011 by a very wide array of, uh, of different musicians giving it their own, their own spin, their own take? On uh, on these classic and some uh, deeper cuts on the album. Darren, I'm going to ask you first. What are your overall impressions? And you might as well hit us with what were your favorite tracks and what were your uh, least favorite tracks? Track number one uh, uh, wasn't, uh, I mean, wow. Are you on the stage right now saying that that first opening track might not have been putting your best foot forward? Oh, man. <laughs> Are you saying that that set a really sloppy tone for the rest of the album? <laughs> Dude, I thought they did that shit in, like, one take or something. <laughs> it certainly sounds like it. Yeah. He was like, load up a gun. Dude. I was the- like, okay, I understand, like, ooh, we're trying to make it sound raw, but you just sound like you didn't know the words. <laughs> uh, that track and one other one uh, had my two lowest ratings. That one does have my second... Uh, my second lowest rating, but oh, it's not the second. worst. Oh, it's no. not the worst. No, it's the second worst. Mm. What was your favorite uh, track on the album? I will say um, some of the guys did like basically just like, you know, lighter and faster versions of the originals. And I kind of enjoyed those. Uh, I-, I like it when um, the Vaselines, when they did Lithium. That's just one of my favorite songs. So I really loved the vibes there, especially uh, um, when the guy came in with the yeah, 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 and the harmonica. Oh, yeah. I thought that was so dope, like a sort of gorillas type of joint. Oh, what's my favorite track? Oh, something in the Way. They did justice to it. Mm-hmm. Shit was fucking dope. But... That first joint, and then the, 
the come as you are. You stumbled upon <laughs> my lowest rated song on the whole fucking album. Because look, look, folks. You, Memory. You can find this song yourself. It's all on YouTube. We, we, It's not even on Spotify, so we had to listen to it on YouTube. Dude, that song started out. I was I was fucking getting ready. It was spacey. It had like right. I'm it was like, fucking oh, like. We going? Ooh, this is nice. And then you fucked it up with chipmunk backing vocals <laughs> for excuse me the whole song. Oh man, the whole song. That gets a one. That gets a motherfucking one because you fucking ruined it. What was that? Right about now. Right about now, we're gonna have to. Take out the jams, motherfucker! And this is not to say that this is the only good track on the album, not at all. But my absolute favorite has to go to your boys, Foxy Shazam. Oh! And Drain You. Kill him, of course. Oh! <laughs> what the. Whoa! Look, <laughs> folks, uh, for the hip hop heads, you might remember your boy, uh, Eric Nally for his vocals mm-hmm. in Macklemore's Downtown, but, yep. uh, whew, this track, boy shines like a diamond. It's all over the place in the best possible way. Wide array of instruments that for me, uh, just had me wondering where it was going to go next. It was like, mm-hmm. how could it possibly get any more epic and it just keeps topping itself over and over and over again what i really liked on this album were the covers that were like complete reimaginings yes. of the original tracks and with that we got uh foxy shazam definitely brought that to the table and not like it wasn't expected Amanda fucking Palmer and Polly. Ooh, the, the enunciation where she does the, uh, let me take a ride to cut yourself. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, it's so good. And just how, like... It just sounded dangerous, like something was just about to happen. <laughs> and, and it's eerie and, like, scary at the beginning, and then it just keeps adding layers on top. Yeah. It was so fucking dope. My only complaint is that it's right after uh, the Vaseline's Lithium cover because they're very similar. Yeah, oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. With, with the Vaseline's, it's very haunting and minimal, and you got the guy doing the kind of eerie uh, backing vocals, and it kind of <laughs> yeah, lingers as it goes, <laughs> and then it goes into the Amanda Palmer cover, and it's it starts out kind of the same way. If it didn't build the way it did, it would be kind of redundant, but it definitely takes um, it takes some chances I'll say that. Territorial Pissings by Surfer Blood. You know, they did the same song, and it's just like, but, I mean, it's a good song, so, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna sound good. <laughs> Stay Away by Charles Bradley and the... M- m- what's that? Menahan... M- m- uh, <laughs> yeah. The Menahan Street Band. Menahan Street Band. If you didn't know that was a Nirvana song, you wouldn't. Like, if you didn't originally hear the original song, uh, you wouldn't know this was a Nirvana cover. Because it, right, right, right. it sounds completely different. The style is very different. Wait, um, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Wait, uh, did I say the wrong one? I was thinking of... Um, Especially with uh, Breed by uh, Titus Andronicus, um, Territorial Pissings by Surfer Blood, Lounge Act by Jessica Lee Mayfield. With, with the country twang that was going on, but it kind of, but it worked. Like It, it kind of had that Lilith Fair sort of type, you know what I'm saying? And uh, on a plane... They, they all sounded very similar uh, to the originals. I can't complain, though. See what I did there? I don't blame you for basically doing a fucking paint by numbers, but, you know, I appreciated the ones who took more of a chance. How did you feel if you hadn't heard the song before? What'd you think of Endless Nameless? I thought that was actually kind of cool. I know the album in the sense that, like, I knew all of these songs, and I was like, oh, wait, they're sa- they're, fr- they're just doing the album. Oh, okay. <laughs> and when it got to the last one, like, I didn't really know the album perfectly, so I was like, oh, this is a pretty cool song at the end. <laughs> I don't remember the last song going on this long, but okay. <laughs> but I, that was a fun one. I like that. <laughs> Old Endless Nameless uh, is kids these days. I'm going to unironically say that because fucking music has changed uh, <laughs> in a way. And, and digital formats are are to blame 
for this mm. because you don't really get this effect these days. Endless Nameless was a hidden track. Remember those? Oh, oh good times. Ooh, oh, yeah, like like your boys Black Eyed Peas, you know, when they put the... <laughs> Yeah, that's the first person I went to. I was just gonna say I don't even. I'm not even familiar with that one. You was fooling me once before, but I'ma tell you, there's no fooling me twice no more. Cause when I open up my third eye, my third eye can't get away with murder. Yeah, oh, they was getting all political, you know, at the end of the album where no one can hear it. You yeah, know, they had to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Ten minutes after uh, something in the way, endless mm. nameless just fucking kicks in. A lot of people say in the Never fall asleep listening to Nevermind. <laughs> I remember you talking about that, didn't you? <laughs> Endless Nameless, just like, ah! <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> and you know what's really funny? Um, Weird Al Yankovic. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> with with his album uh, Off the Deep End, which the album <laughs> parodies the cover of Nevermind. He fucking pulls that same shit. Where after like 10 or so minutes of after the last track. <laughs> Overall, RC, what did you give this uh, rather unique listen? You know, I would give it like a, like a four out of five. I thought it was, they did a lot of, uh, I thought a lot of these guys did a good job. I ended up giving it a solid three. Mainly because a lot of these tracks just kind of did the paint by numbers. And the songs that really stood out were few and far between. But overall, uh, I think it was, you know, it's a nice homage. I will absolutely give them that. They definitely could have done way worse. Um, so I definitely got to give them the credit there. But the next album we got, a bit more recent. And it's from uh, your Patreon. Yes, thank you to Ashwin Baines for suggesting Bars Simpson. Ye girl, Little Sims. Mm, gray area, yes. Coming at you. This Little Sims album, it's it's got a lot of cool stuff. I had a good time. I definitely had a good time. I will say, the one area that kept it from being a fucking knock out of the park, not all the songs I thought had the strongest lyrics. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. And I, it's like, there's something about, like, I think she's doing this thing where it's like, it's half bars. Mm. So the rhyme comes every, like, the real strong rhyme comes every other bar. And it just kind of weakens the cadence overall. Other than that, fucking beats and production on point. Their flow, absolutely no complaints there whatsoever. But you're reading along, it's like, I'm missing, like, the clever punchlines, and you get them sometimes, but you don't really get that many. You get a good turn of phrase every now and then, a good British turn of phrase, where it's just like, oh, okay. But there's no big hits. And it's interesting because I feel like production on this album, mm. the only way I could think of it to describe it is like, Spike Lee production. You know when you watch oh. a Spike Lee movie and it's just like, it just feels like the violins in the score are just really loud? <laughs> I, I got a vibe of like a, uh, I don't even know if this is a thing anymore. I think uh, Open Mic Nights took it over, but the fucking, the go down in the basement fucking poetry slam night. Oh, man. especially a lot of the bass lines. Yeah, the just sitting around snapping their fingers. You got the you got the dude uh, you got the dude with the beret with the stand up bass going to town in the corner. Fucking smoke in the in the lights coming down. Of from the, course, coming down from the ceiling. It's like the cool like that video. Everything's in black and white. There's all Asian people in the audience for some reason. And I'm listening to the songs, and yeah, like the lyrics are cool. But then I'm listening like the production is just like, and it's like, what the fuck? It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard like, to not get distracted. <laughs> yeah, like there are times where the voice is just out overpowered by some things. And there were some parts where it kind of worked. Like uh, there was one song in particular, Wounds. You know, they kind of keep doing the stay near the gunman, drop little tear for the gunman. She live and die by the gunman. And I was like, and at first I was kind of going like, what? 
uh, but then I sort of heard what was going on in the production where you heard the really big just ball of strings. That's all I can <laughs> refer to it as. Is and every time Gunman kept happening, whenever that line come up, it would just keep like just going all over the place. And then there was one time where they stopped for for a line or two and then said it again, and then you kind of heard it come back in for a second. I was like, oh, and you know, it kind of fits how the song in and of itself is about um even though he's a bad guy and you know he he's a he's a gunman you know he's a ne'er-do-well he's a he's a punk he's a hooligan whatever but it's like she understands his story she understands that this person is actually hurt and scared and trying to make it through his life you know with the lyric uh, i tried to live a good life i tell you but when the streets rumble a gunshot for the good guys in this concrete jungle i love that line where she's like mm. a gunshot for the good guys it's just like look i'm just trying to make sure i i stay i stay alive all right and it's like and just that assumption is like you know just because you someone's busting off shots doesn't necessarily mean it's the bad guy you know what i mean like it could be someone just trying to stay fucking safe in this world you know so i i I did like that um overarching story that was able to make me sort of forgive the the lyrical deficiencies in some ways you know what i mean unfortunately the songs that were a bit more toned down were the ones i didn't enjoy as much as the other ones but that's not to say that i disliked them at all like selfish and uh wounds uh pressure those got lower ratings from me but they're still not low ratings because they're so much lower key the saggy lyricism of it kind of is more in your face right it does shine through yeah but favorite tracks for me it would be a tie between sherbert sunset track number nine oh my god so fucking good be quoting that in a second And, (laughs) and maybe my favorite track on the album Stop fucking with my heart! <laughs> oh! 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 Boss of the fucking dress! Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus! Song of the summer! <laughs> fucking boss! Mm. Oh, that god hook! Damn! Jesus! That chorus is so good! The chorus on Offense and Boss are so fucking good! Clear and away the best. It, it was just like, again, you know, when I l- was listening to the lyrics, I was like, I'm not really sure what the song's about, if it's about a relationship yeah. or about her being the best rapper. Da, da, da. But when it comes in, oh, boss, I'm fucking <laughs> All right, that's all I need to know. Gotcha. Fucking Lil Sims mopping the floor with Eminem and his track of the same name, Venom. I got that Venom, 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 Venom. Look, I'd rather listen to this. <laughs> I'd definitely rather listen to this. What did you think of 101 FM? I liked it. I really liked the beat. I thought it was a fun track, despite it kind of being about bummer topics. But I really, 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 really liked the instrumental. You know, I didn't know how to feel about it. Mm. It was just like, it, 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 like I didn't know. How to, it sounded like, you know how like sometimes like K-Rap or, or J-Rap kind of has like a light sounding beat like this. So it, was <laughs> yeah. just like, so it just kind of sounded like they're doing that. And they're like, why are they? What's going on? <laughs> it had that like Japanese sounding electric yeah. guitar. Yeah, I totally got that. Like the bring, 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 bring. Yeah, I, I got that. Yeah. But then when it got to the end and the and the DJ came in, oh, I got it. That's gotta like, go. That's gotta oh, go. No, dude. you didn't like that. Oh, no. I thought that was. Uh-uh. I thought that actually tied the song together. Because no. like, okay, so when you look it up, it's like, oh, one on one FM. Like this song's like dedicated to the UK grime uh, early mm. pirate radio stations. Oh, okay. And so maybe, like, the DJ doesn't really know who the rapper is yet, you know, or, oh, this is Lil Slims. And the way he's, like, kind of slightly whispering, so, you know, he's like, this is on pirate radio and the microphone might not be that great, you know? Okay, okay. I, I like that little thing, you know, it's just like, you can't see us, but you can hear us. <laughs> With that in mind, that definitely adds to it, the fucking mythos. Like, yeah, like, it's such a happy-sounding beat, but, like, the topics are about, here's all the crap I went through, you know? It kind of, like, it makes it sort of, like, that sort of bittersweet nostalgia, sort of, you know? With uh, Sherbert Sunset, this is the only track I wrote down uh, lyrics from, but been in the raw, smoking, just want to take my mind all off. Everything that I've been mindful of, everything that I've enjoyed in life, I'm a survivor of. Making sure to understand the small print before I sign it off. You was meant to be in my Grammy speech, your entire loss. Oh, man. I'll, I'll just keep it real. Truth won't be concealed. 
Please don't listen to this and ask me if I'm hurting or if I'm okay. Uh, allow me to be human and in my feels. Chill. I'm good. I got it. I never lost it. Or am I just lying to myself to skip the topic? Uh, <sighs> dude, there's a lot more rappers talking about therapy in general. I like that. I'm going to applaud that. Yeah. That's honestly how I kind of look at art in a way. And maybe this is just my philosophy on it. It's just like... How many times do people really talk about these issues that are biting at them every day in their lives, you know? And it's like, here's art where it's this place where it's just like, no, you can do it here. In fact, I specifically brought it up here, you know, so we, so now you can, you have to think about it. And even if you're not thinking about it, even if it's just not in your mind, but it's in that background now, you know what I mean? It's, it's there now. It's a piece of the culture that you can look at if you decide to look at it. But the point is that it's there, you know? I feel like it's like watching a good movie where it's like, I feel like some of the best movies don't just give you their point, right? They, they make the points available to you. You know, you can check it out if you want to, but like, there's a main plot in which this element is kind of here. I think that's how we should consume art as sort of like, yo, here, like uh, a show like The Simpsons. They've had episodes of shows where it's like, yeah, that was real problematic the way they handled uh, gay people or, or Indian cultures or this. But it's just like, but you know what? Where the fuck else are people going to get that? And now, yeah, you do have to confront that now. And so it's like, you, we can talk about whether or not they did it well, but at the end of the day... We're, like we have to have the conversation because our art, our, our art brought it up. I had to say our art, <laughs> the art of the day brought it up in a way that we couldn't dismiss. You know what I mean? And and I dig that. I like the uh, last song, uh, "Flowers." Oh, about Amy Winehouse. I loved that man. Oh, that got to me, man. Because like, and, and I liked how she didn't really do it like directly, but you know, there was that whole controversy of like Amy Winehouse died the same time there was a, a shooting in uh, Norway, I believe it was, and people are like, "Oh, how are you gonna care about an artist when someone dies?" It's just like, guys, people can care about more than one thing at the yeah. same time. And <laughs> we we <laughs> but, are but, complex creatures. That's all about framing, and I hate that because right. that makes it seem as if it's supposed to be children's lives weighed against a famous celebrity when it's not that's not yeah. even important that has nothing to do with anything that no more money's gonna go for it towards this people or this person than that person at the end of the day it's like let this person make a song about someone who affected her you know mm. oh my god when she characterized her with uh taking the last hit which is like let me just take one more hit for my eyes closed let me take one more hit for my eyes closed shit i think that was my last hit and then you hear the fade oh that hurt that was a heavy one man yeah um, overall, what was your, uh, final rating on this, uh, project? Four out of five. I got a four as well. Uh, most tracks were in that four, four and a half range. It's a strong recommendation. It will definitely be playing this, uh... Uh, when it premieres this Sunday uh, on Spotify. But if you want to keep abreast... <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> on all the goings-on, and you want to know everything first, and you don't want to be left out in the dark, you gotta follow us on Twitter because we're gonna be tweeting about this shit. As soon as we're done recording, I'm gonna hop on Twitter and let people know, hey, we just finished recording, here's what we fucking talked about. And you'll know... Days before the episode goes up, what we fucking talk about, what we reviewed, and you know what to expect. And if something comes up that, you know, there might be a delay, you're gonna know because we're gonna be tweeting about that shit. So that's, so that's how that works. Just make sure you're following us on Spotify. That's really the only thing I'm asking you to do. But other than that, you really don't need to do shit. Um, if this is your first time listening, though, you're gonna want to play some catch up. You're gonna want to listen to all those all of those mm -hmm. older episodes, all 200 previous episodes, Woo! and you're only gonna find them on fucking Spotify or uh, SoundCloud. Because other than that, they're split up between my YouTube and Darren's no, YouTube. Oh, that's true. That's true. It could get a little confusing. Yeah, exactly. You can find the whole collection uninterrupted you just want to hit one and it's just going to auto play the next one it's such a smooth it's like a mm -hmm. dream i couldn't ask for anything easier or a better way to listen than on spotify so head on over there search going off podcast in the podcasts obviously you're not going to find it under the uh, under the albums or the songs if you like this episode make sure to listen to the other ones because we exactly. do we do this shit every fucking week for the most part and uh, we've been doing it for like five fucking years. So yeah, there's a lot of backlog is what I'm trying to say. If you listen to this week's show and you were like, well, gee golly, 
rap critic and muse why would you review a fucking nirvana tribute album well i'll tell you why inquisitive commenter we are on patreon and we take album review requests and if there's an album that you would like to hear us talk about that might be out of the mainstream might be a little bit older you know the likelihood of us talking about it naturally organically isn't bloody likely head on over <laughs> to either patreon.com slash rap critic or patreon.com slash muse for details you can find out how you can request an album to be reviewed on the show and until next week for the going off podcast i'm muse and i'm the rap critic she didn't even swear hello oh.